Of the fairy. I love big waves. Sunglasses, sunscreen, granola bar. I think I have everything. You always have everything, Huda. I'm looking forward to our picnic. Coconut water on the beach sounds great, doesn't it, Tuba? Tuba, huh? is everything all right? You look like you swallowed a fire beetle. Can I tell you a secret? Of course, Tuba. You're my best friend. You can tell me anything. I'm nervous about the ferry ride to the island of Tremo. Why are you nervous? A kill made it sound so fun. I, I can't swim. What if I fall overboard? Don't worry. It will be okay. We'll figure something out. Dino Rangos! Permission slips, please. No one can go on the field trip without a signed permission slip. <laughs> Duba, do you have your permission slip? I think, I think I lost it. Lost it? That's unlike you, Duba. You're usually so responsible. I even got one from your little brother. I, I'm sorry, Sitinora. I can't find it. I guess I can't go. Oh, remember, Tuba? Mom and Dad put your permission slip in your lunchbox. Oh, I... I guess I forgot. Looks like you can come to the island of Tremel after all. Great. <laughs> Dean? Are you all right, Tuba? You don't look very well. I, I don't feel very well. Here, Tuba, try a mint leaf. It always makes my tummy feel better. Thanks, Oda. Absolutely fabulous. The island of Tremo is a must-see. Tuba? What's wrong? I don't feel very well, Siti Nura. <laughs> hmm, see that tree over there? Why don't you go sit in the shade for a little while? It's not time to board the ferry just yet. I'll go with Tuba. Thank you, Dean. You know, Tuba, when I get scared, my mom always tells me to take some deep breaths. Do you want to try? How are you feeling now, Tuba? I, I'm, I'm scared. That's okay. Let's talk about it. What are you scared of? Scared to cross the water on, on the ferry. I I can't swim. It sounds like you're feeling anxious. It's 
quite understandable. You don't have to go on the ferry if you don't want to. I... I don't? I'll stay with you, Tuba. If you want to stay, I can call your parents. But I have a feeling you would be just fine once you got to the island of Tremo. It really is quite a beautiful place. I do want to go. Dean and I were going to drink coconut water on the beach. It's up to you what you want to do. But if you do decide to come, we'll all stay together and we will make you feel safe at the ferry. Okay, I'll, I'll come. Oh, we can sit together on the ferry, Tuba. There's one more thing that might help. Meet me at the ferry, okay? You better hold on to your purse, Hoda. The ferry is a wild ride. Oh, and, and last time, I got completely soaked by the waves. <gasps> Are you okay, Tuba? I'm okay. Are you, by any chance, nervous about going on the ferry? How did you know? Because I'm nervous too. You are? Yes! Akila's been talking about how bumpy and splashy the ferry ride is going to be. It sounds scary. Don't tell him I said so, though. I won't tell, but I'm glad I'm not the only one who feels nervous. Tuba, if you're still feeling sick, you can hold my shell. Thanks, Hoda, but I'm actually just a bit anxious about going on the boat. It works well for anxiety, too. In case you didn't know, I'm afraid of heights. Really, Hoda? But I've seen you climb the hill by the schoolyard before. I have to climb the hill to collect the best rocks. My special shell makes me feel better. And I tell myself, I can do it. Thanks, Huda. Life jackets are mandatory, class. Safety first, Sino Rangos. A mint leaf. They are great for seasickness. Look, Tuba, it's the island of Tremo. It's beautiful. Are you glad you got on the ferry to come here? Absolutely. And thanks for helping me get over my anxiety. Anytime. write you a new prescription. No, don't. I got my report card. Bravo, Habibti. And good you're back. Mom's worried. Everything is so expensive. I'm afraid we'll have to take Wardi out of school. No! I want her to continue school. 
take care of this for me. Watch it today on Muslim Kids TV. So where was the world's first hospital? Khalid asked, his eyes shining. The three children and their teacher sat in the large metal time machine. They were ready for their next adventure. Do any of you know where it was? Asked their teacher, Mrs. Habiba. Well, said Abdullah, I remember reading about a hospital in Baghdad. That's right, Mrs. Habiba answered. Now we just need the year, said Layla. She typed in the location. The year should be 805, Mrs. Habiba said. Khalid punched in the date. The time machine started to shake and vibrate. After a bright light flash, the kids peered out the window. They saw a large mosque and a building beside it. Whoa! Many of the first hospitals were built beside Masjid, Teacher Habiba explained. Was it really the first hospital? Layla asked. Well, it was the first hospital with real doctors who tried to help people get better. Mrs. Habiba said. What were the other hospitals like? Asked Abdullah. Before the Muslims built hospitals, Christian monks took care of sick people. But they didn't try to help them get better, they just made sure they weren't alone and prayed with them, Teacher Habiba explained. The Muslims were the first people to use medicine to treat sick people in hospitals, Teacher Habiba continued. Do you know what the Prophet Muhammad said about illness? I know, said Layla. It's in the Hadith. God never inflicts a disease unless he makes a cure for it. Very good, Layla, teacher Habiba said. Let's look around, said Khalid. The children and their teacher walked closer to the big hospital building. They saw people walking around carrying baskets of food, herbs, and water. Who built this hospital? asked Abdullah. Harun al-Rashid. But we actually don't know a lot about this first hospital. Soon after, many more hospitals were built, answered Mrs. Habiba. Are those people doctors? asked Layla, watching some men walking in the door. Maybe, answered their teacher. They could also be students. At some point, the early Muslim hospitals became places where students learned how to be doctors. Just like today, Khalid said. We should probably get going, Teacher Habiba said. Where will we go next? asked Abdullah. Wherever we go, let's find some food, Layla said, rubbing her belly. They all laughed as they climbed into the time machine. You are watching Muslim Kids TV. <laughs> Subscribe today, only on Muslim Kids TV. Tasneem's Eid Parachute Party. Parachute Party. It's a wonderful way to have a party with Tasneem. Tasneem spent more time floating in the river of Sudan trying to find a better life with her family. Looking at the sky while resting, she imagined herself falling from the sky instead wearing parachutes where she is able to direct it to go and be safe. I beamed when I saw the airplane. Ali, I said to my brother, the airplane is here. We are going to be flying soon. We both jumped up and down and clapped our hands. We hugged each other tightly. This is the best eyed present ever, said Ali. The roar of the engine was soon close to us, and wind whipped down the runway. Soon, the airport staff put the stairs up to the airplane, and the pilot opened the door. I turned around to look at my parents' faces. My mother and father were both smiling bright, big smiles. <laughs> then. I grabbed their hands and we walked up the stairs and onto the airplane, where the pilot welcomed us aboard. Welcome aboard, Tasneem and Ali, said the flight attendants and parachuting experts. Within a few minutes, we took off. We each had a window seat, a 
And with seatbelts fastened, we watched as the ground faded away into the background and the clouds took over. Then we cruised over fields, grassland, rivers and lakes. Finally, we were at the right altitude and the parachuting guides came up to us with our special packs. They explained that each of us would parachute down with one of the guides. We would land in the middle of a big field all together. But first, we had to get changed. Next, the parachute guide opened up the door of the airplane and the wind rushed in. We had our special parachuting suits on. First up was Father. He and his parachuter clipped in together, walked up to the door of the plane. The parachuter was wearing a special backpack. Then they dropped right out of the airplane and into the sky. Next, it was Mother's turn. Finally, it was my turn. The rush of the wind as we jumped out of the plane was unlike anything I'd ever experienced. I was flying like a bird. I screamed loudly with excitement and adrenaline pumped through my body. Then I heard my brother yelling in excitement behind me. Slowly we caught up to my mother and father. Soon. All four of us were holding hands in the air, swirling and falling through the air. Then, the guides instructed us to separate. Soon, it would be time for us to deploy our parachutes. We floated apart, almost swimming through the air as we continued to hurtle toward the ground. The trees, Rivers, lakes and fields looked absolutely beautiful down below. Then, my parachute guy deployed our parachute and we immediately slowed our fall. It felt like we pulled up even. It was an amazing feeling to slow down our fall and I could look more carefully at all the beautiful things below. The wind slowed and I felt like I could relax now we weren't plunging towards the earth. Finally, we came closer to the ground. We were at the level of the trees and the parachuting guide told me to brace for landing. We landed in the squatting position on the empty field and I began laughing and laughing. What a fun time it was parachuting. As soon as I was unstrapped, I ran around the field hugging my mom, dad and brother. It was such an amazing experience, travelling in this way. Tasneem, said my mum. Are you asleep? she asked, poking me. No, Mama, I said, opening my eyes and returning to my reality. Just daydreaming, I said. We were floating down the river on a boat, looking for a safer place to live. What were you dreaming about? My mother asked. Oh, I dreamed we were all parachuting, I said laughing. Can you imagine all of us flying through the sky? You'd have to convince me to go on the airplane first, my mother said laughing. Maybe someday, I thought wistfully. It would be much easier to fly where we needed to go than to find a safe place by floating down the river. Tasneem lives with her family in Sudan. Conflicts and violence in Sudan have made many people flee their homes in search of safer places to live. Authorities estimate that there are over two million refugees within the country and another two million outside the country. Subscribe today, only on Muslim Kids TV.
Go, go! Keep moving! Tahara? Where are your parents? Why are you so far from our neighborhood? We can't stay here. Come with me. I know some place safe. Do you remember me, Tahara? I'm Ahmed. I live... I lived next door to you and your family. I used to play football with your brother, Adnan. <laughs> Listen, Tahara. I know it's scary, but it will be worse for us if we stay here. I promise to take care of you. Do you trust me? <laughs> Great. Okay. On the count of three, stay close. One, two, three. <laughs> Tahara, what are you doing? Come on, we've got to go. Now, can we go? Darn, and that was my root. It's okay, come inside. Come on in now. Don't be shy. Close the door behind you. Hello, dear. Are you hungry? We'll fix that. How was your journey, Ahmed? Well done! <laughs> Amu Bassam, this is Tahar. Her family lives next door to me. Her brother is my friend. You are welcome here, Tahara. <laughs> Tahara? This is Amu Bassam. He's a friend. Do you know where your parents are, my dear? That's okay. 
Ahmed will help you get settled in. All right, Aya. Time for your nap. But do you know where I put my glasses? What would I do without you, my dear? Since the fighting started, Abu Bassam lets us kids stay at his house, or what's left of it. Most of us don't know where our parents are, and some of our parents have died. Abu Bassam takes care of us now. This is Amina and her brother Muhammad. <laughs> Muhammad, say hi to the new girl. Ooh, what's your name? Her name is Tahara. She's my neighbor, was my neighbor. You can have my blanket. Do you want to play with the other kids? Okay, well, you can't just sit there and stare at me. You did what your family would have wanted you to do. Survive. Where is your family? They are not with me anymore. I'm sure your family is okay. They are probably looking for you right now. Really? Really. We'll look for them tomorrow. You promise? I promise. Want to see something I've never showed to anyone? Is, is this your family? That's my dad and my mom. And this is my dad's best friend, Doc Mohammed. I always liked his mustache. He's the one who sent all these postcards and letters. Doc Muhammad moved to Canada a long time ago, when I was still a baby. But he and my dad always kept in touch. Will you read one to me? Sure. My dear friend Omar, I hope this message finds you well. I have arrived in the Thunder Bay, Ontario. Although Canada stretches much farther, this is the farthest north I have ever been. 
I am sitting by the shore of Lake Superior, the biggest of all the Great Lakes. It's so big you might mistake it for an ocean. I feel a sense of calm here, next to this big body of water, surrounded by land and trees as far as the eye can see. Little Ahmed would love it here. I know he has a fondness for animals. There are many fish in the lake and little squirrels running around on the dock. Yesterday, I even saw a fox. The best part is the magic that happens here at the night. I look up and see the moon and the stars, and I'm comforted because this is the same sky that I have looked upon all my life in Syria. There's one thing that we don't have at home, the northern lights. You would not believe your eyes. Green, violet, and magenta hues swirl across the sky. And I cannot help but think it is some kind of magic. Someday, my friend, you must visit me here. Send my love to Farah and your beautiful boy, Ahmed. By now, he must be running around the square, just like we used to. All my love. Doc Mohammed. <laughs> I've always wanted to go to Canada. I'm going to dream about the Northern Lights. Subscribe today, only on Muslim Kids TV.